So hello everyone and welcome to day one of the Sickle Cell Business Summit 2021. The summit theme is together, we are reducing stigma and improving patient confidence in Ontario hospitals. And the focus of today's summit is quality of care provided to sickle cell disease patients. This summit has provided a unique opportunity for a respectful yet candid dialogue between care providers and the patient community. We are holding this summit as part of a duty as a community to take steps towards reforming and advocating for equitable healthcare and to also ensure that no sickle cell disease patient is stigmatized based on the color of their skin, a sensory background, health challenges, and where they live in Ontario. Today, we have our partners in healthcare, the health system leaders, Ontario Health and other Ministry of Health representatives, the sickle cell disease care providers from various hospitals, patients, their caregivers, community advocates, and industry leaders. So we've got the right people at the right table, and we thank you for joining us. Before I hand it back to my co-chair, Dr. Jennifer Bryan, I especially want to thank our guest from the Ministry of Health for taking the time to join us, to listen to the needs of the patient community and how our care providers are responding. Thank you everyone and welcome. I am gonna go ahead and introduce Dr. Jennifer Bryan, who is the co-chair of the Summit Planning Committee. Dr. Jennifer Bryan is an emergency physician at the University Health Network in Toronto and an assistant professor in the Division of Emergency Medicine at the University of Toronto. She is the Director of Operations of the Toronto Addis Ababa Academic Collaboration in Emergency Medicine. She's a founding member of the University Health Network Emergency Department Sickle Cell Working Group and the founding chair of the Canadian Association of Emergency Physicians, Anti-Racism and Anti-Colonialism Committee. On this note, I welcome Dr. Jennifer Bryan and thank you everyone again for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lenray, for that lovely introduction. Um, and welcome, everyone. A few housekeeping items um, to begin with. Um, first off, the sessions are going to be recorded so that they're available for reference or for attendees who weren't able to join us today. Um, throughout the sessions, if you have any questions for the panelists, um, please do use the, the Q&A button or the chat um, to send the questions to us. Um, we'll go through as many of them as we can during the Q&A sessions um, after the panelists speak please do engage with us on social media. Um, you'll see the hashtag SCD Summit 2021 here on the left side of your screen, um, as well as our handles um, for the social media sites. Um, I do want to remind our speakers um, to please mute and turn off your video um, when you're um, uh, not um, uh, part of the, the panel discussion. Um, and to be sure to turn your video on um, and your microphone on when you are joining us to speak and during the Q&A. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to work together, just like um, Lan Ray said. Um, this is a chance for healthcare workers, people living with sickle cell, friends, family, community members to all come together. Now, some of the questions and conversations over the next couple of days um, might be difficult, might be challenging, but um, if we're all working together, maintaining respect and civility throughout, um, we can reach our goal of a proving care for everyone affected by sickle cell disease. I'd like us to start off with a land acknowledgement. So we're grateful 
for the opportunity to gather even virtually on this land. And we thank the generations of Indigenous people who have taken care of this land long before other nation groups came. In particular, we acknowledge the traditional territories of the Ojibwe, the Anishinaabe, and the Mississauga of the New Credit, whose territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. We also recognize the contributions of the Métis, Inuit, and First Nations peoples um, that have made in shaping and strengthening this province and this country as a whole. We also need to continuously educate ourselves about the colonial history of this country and understand how the wrongdoings of the past still impact the present and the future. I encourage everyone at this session to actively seek information and to take action. The agenda is available on the Sickle Cell website. Um, you can access it using um, the site directly or using the QR code that's up in, on the upper right corner of your screen. Um, after our introductions and housekeeping today, we're going to be hearing from um, SCAGO President um, Mrs. Lanray Tunji Ajayi again um, about the, the reasons that we're all coming together today. Um, uh, we're going to then have um, firsthand experiences um, from people living with sickle cell um, about their experiences and receiving medical care. Um, next at 1045, we're going to hear from our first group of hospitals um, about what work is happening at their sites regarding sickle cell followed by a Q&A. We're gonna have a 30 minute break from 12.15 to 12.45, and then regroup again at 12.45 to hear from Dr. Verhovsak um, about the clinical handbook for sickle cell disease. Um, after that, we're gonna hear from our second group of hospitals um, with a following Q&A, and then wrap up with our um, closing remarks at 2.45. Um, you're all going to receive a link to an evaluation for today's session. Um, it should only take about five minutes to complete, but it's incredibly helpful for us in planning further events. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'd like to now ask Mrs. Lanray Tunji Ajayi, um, I'm president of the Sickle Cell Awareness Group of Ontario um, and CEO, to speak with us about the project that's brought us all together here today. Lanray. Thank you very much, Dr. Brian. Um, I appreciate that. So welcome again, everyone. So the project um, in 2019, the Sickle Cell Awareness Group of Ontario um, embark on a study to identify hospitals in need of education to provide optimal care um, to patients living with sickle cell disease in Ontario. And this is due to um, a lot of uh, feedback from um, the patient community about the quality of care that they are receiving in Ontario hospitals. So as Dr. Brian mentioned, the Ministry of Health commissioned the Clinical Handbook for Sickle Cell Disease Visual Closed Crisis and yet we found that not many healthcare providers in the province even know about it. While this may not be intentional, it has certainly contributed to poor care provided to sickle cell disease patients in many Ontario hospitals. Largely due to infrequent presentation of sickle cell patients in many of the community hospitals, there is limited knowledge of the disease by many care providers in our healthcare system. As such, many people with sickle cell disease are not receiving the right care at the right time, except when they go to sickle cell disease centers of excellence. And sometimes at these centers, they still encounter in their emergency department and inpatient units, systemic racism, inherent biases, sometimes characterized um, the quality of care that the patient end up receiving. We know that it is human nature to have bias in something, in a person. And we know that biases affect how we treat others and how we respond to situations. For instance, how people look, dress, talk, their accent, ancestry, all contribute to how we perceive and how we treat them. If you look at the pictures that I have, and I kind of place name on one of them, we have Aminat in Ijab, we have Jennifer, we have um, jerky, and we have um, uh, Becky. So 
we have all these people, and I think by even looking at them, we already make up our mind um, on each one of them. So imagine Jackie. Jackie is a lady in dreadlocks. Imagine Jackie walks into the emergency department and say, I am in pain. I have sickle cell disease and my pain is just unbearable. And as a healthcare provider, one may take a look at her and, and think, could she be drug seeking? Because again, we look at her old being, how she, uh, how she appears, you know? Why? Because we sometimes attribute, you know, the style of hair care um, and dreadlocks and so on to, um, to drugs. Yet Jackie has never taken street drugs in her life. But due to bias from some care providers, she may be left in the emergency department for hours. But she simply just need care for episodic pain crisis. So to avoid this, Becky, at a dress well, what, even what a mist, a lipstick, to ensure she is taken seriously. Imagine try to look your best when you're dealing with a pain level that has been compared to terminal cancer pain. Yet, Jennifer may or may not have taken street drugs, but she will receive the right care at the right time. Haminat may also be discriminated against because she's wearing hijab. It's just human nature. Bias can be unconscious and it can be conscious. But the sickle cell patients are speaking up. They are saying that they do not receive the right care at the right time in many of our hospitals. They are saying that many hospitals do not have a standard of care guidelines adequate to support their care and that they have been provided with subjective treatment. Some are left for 20 hours plus we heard from patients in excruciating pain, simply because healthcare providers do not believe they are in pain. And so, we wanted to know, how do we partner? Which hospitals do we need to work more with to ensure that patients receive optimal care when they present in our hospitals, regardless of how they look? Patients provided their perspectives and I will be pro presenting the abstract tomorrow. But I want you to take a minute and just think about these four great women that are showcased on this slide and think about how do you see them? How do you perceive them? And how do we unlearn bias and provide the right care, no matter how they look, to each one of them? And I know that the hospitals that we have met with are working to ensure this. So I ask you again, to join us tomorrow when I present on the abstract study. And before I pass um, on uh, the rest of you know, this session to my colleague, I would like to iterate that inadequate sickle cell care only costs the government more money. And we cannot, we, we, sorry, we can only cut the wastage by working together now to improve sickle cell disease care quality in our province and in our hospitals. And this is the reason why we're grateful to you, the healthcare providers, the patient community, the Ministry of Health, for joining us to chart a path forward together. Thank you.